إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد throughout the Quran you find a certain phrase repeated over and over again الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believe and who do righteous actions or righteous deeds. In fact, this sentence is mentioned 51 times throughout the Qur'an. 51 times. It must be important. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, Allah is the best of teachers, He knows what we need to hear over and over again. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, knows that we need to hear this over and over again, we need to take a moment to appreciate what is being said when we hear these words, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمْلُوا الصَّلِحَاتِ And are we from amongst those people? The first thing that we should realize is that the very first time that this ayah is mentioned, the very first time this phrase is mentioned in the Qur'an, Allah tells us its importance and lets us know that it is indeed the key to Jannah. That when you have proper faith, when you know what you believe, when you're on a solid foundation of Iman, when you've done your research, when you have conviction, and then not only do you know correct beliefs, but on top of that you put them into action, you live by that faith. Allah SWT tells us what? وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ That give good news to those who believe and do righteous deeds, that they will, be, they will have gardens in paradise beneath which rivers flow. So the very first time that we hear about this, these, these, this sentence, we find out how important it is, it is your key to Jannah. That's the very first thing you need to know. Having proper Iman, knowing what you believe. Why we are here? How do we get here? What is my purpose in this life? Where are we going? Researching these questions deeply until you have conviction. And then that not being enough, that's just stage one. Stage two, am I implementing this to the best of my abilities? Am I putting this into action? That is your key to Jannah if you indeed apply it. How does it apply? Well, because Allah SWT tells us that we should never have blind faith. We should never be people who simply just follow something because it is our cultural inheritance. It is our family tradition. We are people who research. We are people who ask questions and get to the bottom of issues. Allah SWT says, قُلْ O Muhammad, say these words. Say this, O Muhammad SAW. That say what? Say, this is my way. I invite to Allah ala basiratim. I invite to Allah with eyes open, with clear evidences, with proofs. It's not blind following. It is not, oh, just have faith and don't ask any questions and, you know, just use this, don't use this. This, this concept doesn't exist, exist in our deen. Alhamdulillah, Allah created us with a head and a heart. And we have to be people who are emotionally sound as well as intellectually sound. Both apply. So that is the first point. How we can apply this? Secondly, the believer must apply what he knows. You cannot be a hypocrite. You cannot be a liar. You cannot be a munafiq. You cannot have an incongruity between your inside and your outside saying, oh, this is what I believe. I know what I should do. I just never do it. I say one thing. This is the right path. I know exactly what the right path is. I, in fact, I tell everybody all the time, I just never follow that path. That is going to create turmoil in your life. That is going to create incongruity in your life. We know that we see harmony in this universe. And it's because of that incredible harmony in the universe that we conclude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. And so I submit to you that you should take that same concept and apply it to your own personal life and say, you know what? I need to have oneness in my own personal self. That what I say on, uh, to the world, what I believe on the inside, what I do on the outside, all of it has to be congruent. 
All of it has to be one. Why? Because if it is one, then I will have harmony. These things have to come together. You have to create consistency with your internal and external. Why? So that you can have internal harmony. So this is why it's important to be of those who As Allah commands His Messenger, So Allah says what? And remain on the right course as you are commanded and do not follow their vain desires, their inclinations. Don't follow you know, whatever they are, their passions are. You have to make sure that you follow the truth. That you know what the truth is and then you apply it. What is the opposite of الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ I mean to know, if you want to be upon the people who are of those who believe and work righteous deeds, you have to know what the opposite is. What is the opposite? Well, when you don't know what the truth is, when you haven't researched it, that means you are living in confusion. That means you are living with lots of misconceptions. You have not done due diligence and done your research to truly be convinced of the truth. You are not convinced yet. So that means you're walking around with lots of doubts. And how many people walk around in life? You ask them, what do you believe? What do you believe about life? Why do you think we're here? What do you think the purpose of life is? And honestly, they have no idea. And yes, it's, they might become successful from a wealth perspective. They might have lots of friends and family, but at the end of the day, they are living in confusion because all of that is built on a foundation that is completely hollow. You need to start with that foundation. What do I believe? That's the first thing that you have to focus on. And if you do not do that, then you are somebody who is full of shubuhat. Shubuhat means doubts. If, on the other hand, you know what the truth is, you are convinced that Islam is, is the 100% truth, the Quran is the word of Allah, you are convinced that Allah is your creator and that there is Jannah and Nar, there is a paradise and a hellfire, you are 100% convinced of all of this, and yet you never apply it, what does that mean? That means your sickness is not shubuhat, but shahawat. These are the two roots of every single evil. Every single bad deed you can think of always comes from one of these two roots, shubuhat or shahawat. Either I don't know or I don't care. You can think of any example you want. You see a Muslim and he's drinking alcohol, just as a very simple example. Why is he drinking alcohol? Either he doesn't know, he has shubuhat, he hasn't done due diligence in terms of research to find out that alcohol is haram. Or he knows and he doesn't care. Shahawat, desires. I know the truth, I just don't apply it. Every single sin that you can think of has these two roots, shubuhat and shahawat. And they are the exact opposite of alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat. Why? Because if you have proper iman, that means your knowledge is firm, you have no doubts. Wa amilu salihat, that means you're applying what you know, you are doing good deeds, and that you are overcoming your shahawat, you're overcoming your desires. I hope everybody is seeing the equation here. I hope it is clear. It has to be clear, in fact. Why? Because 17 times a day, you are asking Allah to stay away from these two root evils, shubuhat and shahawat. 17 times a day. You are saying, oh Allah, I don't want to be the person who knows the truth, who knows what pleases you, but it decides to do the opposite, decides to earn your anger. I don't want to be mahlubi alayhi. Because that's exactly what you're doing. When you know what the truth is, that means you know what is pleasing to Allah. When you choose the opposite path, you are saying, I want to earn the displeasure of Allah. I want to become mahlubi alayhi. Or you have sh sh shubuhat, you have doubts. You're unclear. You don't know what the truth is. You haven't done research. You haven't researched issues to get clarity. So you have these shubuhat, these doubts. You're walking around in life confused. You are who? Allah li. You are astray. 17 times a day we're saying, Oh Allah, keep us on the straight path. The path of those who the path of those who you have blessed, you've given your ni'mah of hidayah, your ni'mah of guidance. Oh Allah, I'm trying to stay on the straight path. I don't want to veer off to the left or to the right. I don't want to go off onto any tangents. I want to stay on the straight path. I don't want to be of those who don't know who, who, who know the truth but don't care. They know what's right, but they, their desires overcome them. That's one extreme. The other extreme is what? I don't want to be like those who are completely confused. They don't even know what the truth is. And the Prophet said that if you want the example of these two groups, they're Al Yahud wa Nasara, the Jews and the Christians that came before you. And what's fascinating is that right after you're done making this dua in Surah Fatiha, what is next? Alif Lam Mim, Surah Baqarah. What is all of Surah Baqarah? An expose explaining exactly how Bani Israel went astray. It goes into great detail explaining the story of Bani Israel and how the Yahud, all the different problems that they had that made them mahlubi alayhi. 
And then right after that is what? Oh, uh, there another, the second, uh, so you have the biggest surah, Surah Baqarah. Then right after that, Ali Imran. Another very large surah, Ali Imran. The family of Imran. Who's part of that family? Isa alayhi salam. This surah goes into detail explaining how a Nasara, the Christians, went astray. So right after you're done making this dua, Oh Allah, put me on the straight path. I don't want to go down the path of Shubuhat or Shahawat. I don't want to go down the path of the Yahud wa Nasara. Then you get a very large detailing of what exactly the Yahud did to go down that path and what exactly the Nasara did to go down that other path. If we are people who are sincerely making this dua, we should sincerely research to find out exactly what they did wrong so that we don't go down that path as well. So therefore, faith upon proper knowledge and acting in accordance with that knowledge is the key to eliminating evil from your life. Because you are making this dua 17 times a day. Furthermore, Adam alayhi salam, when we look at his life, fascinating that Adam alayhi salam, before he was sent to earth, he was equipped. He was equipped so that he could defend against shubuhat and shahawat. He was equipped with iman and amal, so he could be part of alladhina amanu amal salihat. How was he equipped? How was he equipped with knowledge? Allah says before that he sent him to earth, Allah says what? وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا We taught Adam the names of everything. Now he has ilm. He doesn't have shubuhat, he doesn't have doubts. Because he has solid knowledge. And furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him through a test. Allah tempted him with the tree, eating from the fruits. And he did fail that test. And he learned exactly what it means to slip and to earn the consequences for your failures. He felt that experience. And so that means he went onto earth after, as Allah mentions, فَأَزَلَّهُمَا الشَّيْطَانِ عَنْهَا فَأَخْرَجَهُمَا مِمَّا كَانَ فِيهِ That shaitan made them slip and it brought them out from where they once were, in Jannah. So what does this mean? That Adam is being properly trained. Adam is being trained in what, such a way that he can have not, he won't be tempted by shubuhat, he won't, be, uh, he won't have the fitna of shubuhat because he has firm knowledge. He won't have the fitna of shahawat because he's had the experience. He knows what it's like to be tempted, to fall into temptation, and to suffer the consequences. Now he's ready to go onto earth, and now he's ready for this test called life. So each of us have to think in that same mentality, that we are all constantly faced with these two root evils. We are constantly faced with either we are lacking knowledge, so we need to research, or we're lacking uh, 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 discipline, so we need to have resolve and to encourage one another and be strong in our determination to stay upon the true path. So, one, what is the blessing of Alladina Amanu Amanu Salihat being of those who believe and do righteous deeds? One, guaranteed Jannah. Number two, like I mentioned, is that it is protection from the two root evils of every single sin. Number three, it is the key to happiness in this dunya. In this dunya, there is, you can, you can research as much as you like. There are so many self-help books, so many self-help lectures and seminars and workshops. This is a multi-million dollar industry. What is the key to happiness? How can you achieve happiness? And so on and so forth. You can find thousands of books and lectures with this title. What, what is the key to achieving happiness? And I encourage you to listen to many of the most famous, most professionals who teach these topics, what you will find at the end of the day, it always is going to boil down to two main things. Number one, I mean amongst other things, but the main, main issues that will, it will boil down to. Number one, figure out who, what do you believe in life? What are your principles? What are your paradigms? What do you believe in? What is important to you? Figuring that out is key step number one, alladina amanu. Number two, having the discipline to live that way. You can go through as many motivational speakers, as many uh, uh, self-help books as you like, you will always find that these two ingredients are at the, at the base of it, at the core of it. Why? Because that is the way true happiness is achieved. When people think that I'm going to achieve happiness by running after my desires, what they find is that they hit a dead end. You can go out and you know, do drugs or do dr uh, get drunk or just go out and entertain yourselves. And yes, that will give you a feeling of happiness for a very temporary amount of time. But ultimately, a hedonistic lifestyle leaves you feeling empty. However, the person who knows what he believes in, who is completely convinced that this is the right path, and is pushing himself in that direction, is working hard for what he believes in, even if he's pushing himself to the point of exhaustion, you will find that that person has achieved the most amount of contentment. They feel good about themselves. And anybody who has worked hard, staying up late at night, studying for an exam, they know how much, how good they feel about themselves because they push themselves to their limit and they've, they, 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 they've achieved a high uh, achievement because of that. 
I studied the topic, I was tired, it was late, but I pushed myself and I understood the topic, I'm proud of myself. Or writing an essay, or working on a certain project. As long as you believe in what you're working on, deeply, and you push yourself, you will, even if you're exhausted, even if you're beat up, you will still have this d deep inner contentment with yourself. That is the true root of happiness, and you can study as many self-help gurus that will teach you all the same thing. Why? Because all of them are getting this truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah tells us in the Quran, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيْبَةً Allah says that whoever does righteousness, whether they're male or female, while they are a believer, so again, you have these two key ingredients, firm faith and then action. What, what is the result of that? We will surely, we as in Allah will surely cause him to have a good life. All of the, the question, how do you have a good life? This, uh, this is answered in one ayah of the Quran. If you go and research as much as you want, happiness in the Quran, how do I achieve happiness on this earth? How can I be happy? You will find this ayah comes up the most. Because it seems to be the most comprehensive eye saying, look, do you really want true happiness? Then figure out what you believe and live by it. Act upon it. That is the best way to do it. And inshallah, we'll continue in the second book. But wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, wa sallam, wa sallam, wa sallam, wa sallam, wa sallam. Bismillah, wa alhamdulillah, wa sallatu wa sallam, wa rasulillah. Ibn al-Qayyim has a very interesting, rahimahullah, he has a very interesting quote, he says, المؤمن المخلص لله أطيب الناس عيشا أنعمهم بالا أشرحهم صدرا أسرهم قلبا وهذه, وهذه جنة عاجلة قبل الجنة الآجلة He says what? The believer who is sincere to Allah is the purest person in terms of lifestyle, the most blessed person in terms of mind frame, the most open-hearted, the happiest person in his heart. And this is the bliss of, of this dunya before the Jannah of the afterlife. In other words, he's saying that there is the metaphorical Jannah on earth where you have Iman in your heart and that gives you a certain level of Jannah on, that you experience in dunya, which obviously does not compare to the true Jannah, the real manifestation of Jannah when you pass away and enter into paradise. But he's saying that every single believer, he tastes the metaphorical Jannah before he tastes the real Jannah. That that is the effect of Iman. Because whether you're going through good times or hard times, you have, you know exactly what your goals are and you work towards them. Now, I am not saying that you will always feel happy. Because there's a difference between feeling happy and being happy. I know it sounds like they're the same thing, but they're not quite the same thing. Feeling happy is an emotion. Feeling happy, because it's based on, because it's based on emotion, and emotionality goes up and down. Emotions are changing constantly. And feeling happy is based on usually a material possession, entertainment, or pleasing, or the approval of other people. In other words, it is always dependent upon things that are fleeting, things that are temporary, things that are of this dunya. That is how you feel happy. However, being happy is a completely different thing. Being happy is when you take your feelings, whether they're feeling happy or sad, you take your feelings and you put them as secondary. You give them little importance. My feelings don't matter that much. I don't care, I'm not constantly worried about how am I feeling, am I feeling this or am I feeling that. You minimize your feelings, why? Because you've discovered something that is more important than your feelings. You believe in something that is greater than yourself. You don't care just about, oh how am I feeling, am I feeling good or am I feeling bad. You minimize all of that. You care primarily about what you believe in. Something that is eternal, something that is beyond this world, something that will never go away. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately. But you'll find that the people that believe in something, because they put that above their own feelings, then their feelings get minimized. Sometimes they go through hard times, but it's not so hard. Sometimes they go through good times, but they don't, it's not the, you know, the greatest thing ever. Why? Because the tr their eyes are on the prize. The true thing that they care about is what? Something that is beyond them. It is the thing that they believe in. Ultimately, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because you are in that state, yes, your feelings might, might oscillate between happy and sad, but ultimately, you are in a state of happiness. You are being happy, not just feeling happy. And that is a very important distinction. There's a very beautiful quote that says, those who think only sunshine brings happiness have never danced in the rain. It's a very nice quote, and it's very true. That if you think that only good times, sunshine being good times in this case, if you think that the only way you can be happy is if there's sunshine, if you're having a good time, then clearly you've never danced in the rain. In other words, you've never embraced difficulty. But that's the person who has iman, the person who has a goal that is greater than himself, they can strive for that goal in good times, and they even feel content when they're striving for that goal in, in hard times because that goal is greater than themselves. Now, if you are the type of person who is sitting and listening right now, 
and thinking, look, I don't know what I believe. I mean, yes, I nominally say that I'm a Muslim. Yes, I have that title. I was, I, it was inherited to me by my parents. But I really don't know if I truly believe it. I mean, if I really believe that Allah told me to pray five times a day, if I really believe God was telling me this, I'd do it. If I really believe God spoke words to me, I'd read the Quran, but I clearly don't. So I don't really know what I believe. If you're in that position, I have some advice for you. Start by figuring out who you are not. Instead of trying to figure out all in one shot exactly who you are, first figure out who you are not. Play a little game of process of elimination. Figure out the things that you know that you do not stand for. Figure out the things that you know are a waste of time in your life. The things that are adding no uh, quality, no benefit to your life. And eliminate them one by one by one. And inshallah, as time goes forward, you will figure out ta'ala who you truly are. You will solidify your belief and then you need to apply that and live by it. Why is this so important specifically for the youth? I would like to just make a quick point about this. How high, subhanAllah, is the divorce rate? We find that young people are getting married all the time, and unfortunately, so many of these marriages are ending in divorce. Why is that the case? Unfortunately, many people, they are basing their marriage purely on emotions, purely on attraction. They don't really know how to evaluate another, another human being. They don't even know how to evaluate themselves. So I submit to you that perhaps this is the best way that you can move forward before you get married. Figure out exactly what do I actually believe. Figure out not just something that sounds good, not just something that will please the masses, not just something that you know you should say. No, what do I actually believe in? Step number one. Step number two, do I live in accordance with my beliefs fully? Or am I a hypocrite? Or am I a liar? Or am I somebody who says one thing and does another thing? Number one, am I, do I truly believe in this deen? Number two, am I truly applying it to the best of my ability, to my maximum potential? And if you can do number, stage one and stage two properly, you know exactly what you believe. You've researched it. You've done your due diligence. Every time you had a doubt, you didn't just let it linger. You actually went deeper and deeper until you figured out exactly what the answer was. So you have a solid foundation of belief. And then you apply what you believe. Now you are in a position to find somebody who is doing the same thing that you are. Now you are in a position to find a spouse a husband or a wife, somebody who believes like you believe and lives like you live. Until you've done that, you are on shaky grounds. And if you are on shaky grounds, to bring somebody else into your life is going to make them on shaky grounds too. And it's not a wise decision to do so. How can we protect this Iman and this Amr Salih? How can we protect, how can we protect ourselves to maintain ourselves as alladheena amanu wa amilus salihat how can we protect ourselves from these two root evils of shubuhat and shahawat of doubts and desires in the very final time so i already talked about the first time it was mentioned in the quran now i'm talking about the last time it's mentioned in the quran the last time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this phrase in the quran is where in surah al-asr wal asr inna al-insana fi khusr illa alladheena amanu wa amilus salihat wa tawassaw bil-haqq wa tawassaw bis-sabr and this gives us the formula of how to protect our iman and our, our amal salih our righteous deeds. How? Because Allah says, be people who believe, who do righteous deeds, and who enjoin in the truth. Enjoining in the truth is how you protect that iman. Because the way that iman is attacked is through doubts, is through confusion. How can you fight against these shubuhat? How can you fight against doubts? How can you fight against confusion? Spend time with people that will enjoin in the truth, that will have beneficial conversations that will teach and learn mutually. You as a group, you will learn together so that all the doubts will be dispelled. Spend time with people of haq. Now, when it comes to your actions, what if you don't have the discipline to act as a good person? You feel like, I know what the truth is, I just don't know how to apply it. What is the answer? Allah tells us, Enjoy mutually with people of discipline. Spend time around people who motivate one another, who discipline each other, who encourage one another, and who are constantly harvesting willpower. So if you want to protect الَّذِينَ amanu wa amilu salihat, if you want to protect your faith and your action, what do you do? وَتَوَاسَبُ الْحَبْ for the first, and وَتَوَاسَبُ الْصَبْ for the second, and inshallah that is your protection. So, to quickly summarize inshallah, when it comes to this sentence, الَّذِينَ amanu wa amilu salihat, those who believe and do righteous deeds, we now know that the very first time Allah mentions it, it is the key to Jannah. We know that it implies that you have clarity of vision, you have clarity in your life and you know exactly what you believe. And furthermore, you have the discipline to actually live that way. You have the discipline to apply your beliefs. And that is the only way to live. Why? Because number three, it is the key to happiness. It will make you happy in this life and it will give you paradise in the next life. Also, the opposite of it 
are the root evils to every single sin that you can think of, which we take refuge in 17 times a day, those are doubts and desires, shubuhat and shahawat. Also, it is the best foundation for a healthy marriage, and how can we protect ourselves? By having good company. Good company that we will, that we will teach and learn from, that we will benefit from in terms of gaining more knowledge, and good company that will motivate us, discipline us, encourage us, and cultivate our willpower. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who amanu wa'amilu salihat have firm belief and who apply that belief in our actions. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. وعافنا فيما عافيت وتولنا فيما توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تبارك ربنا وتعاليت ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسرة وفي الآخرة حسرة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سلم كثيرا وأقم الصلاة